I got my first data science job back in September 2021. And I remember come the end of my first year, a lot of things that I wished I knew before going into that first role. So in this video, I want to go over some of the regrets I had or basically the things I wish I knew before landing my first data science job. I hope this may help you and also overcome the things that I struggled with when you have your first role as well. Let's get into it. When you're learning data science, chances are is that you're working by yourself. So the need of version control for your code is probably very unlikely. Not to mention if you're anything like me, learning things like Git is not as fun as learning things like neural networks, for example. However, I can promise you that nearly every data scientist in the industry uses Git or GitHub in one way or the other. In most companies, you'll be working in cross-functional teams with analysts, software engineers, and product managers. And chances are you'll be working on the same code base. So the need for version control is paramount. To be honest, learning Git isn't very hard and it shouldn't take you more than a week to learn all the basic functionalities to that beginner level. Free Code Camp has a great intro video to Git and it only takes about an hour to complete, so you can't go wrong with it. After you watch that video, I really recommend you set up your own GitHub profile and add some repos to it using the command line to really get some hands-on experience. Now, the majority of beginner or student data scientists use notebooks as their main IDE, like Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab. And there's nothing wrong with this. Notebooks are great to visualize data, really good for beginners, and overall a great kind of package for data scientists. However, in industry, most of your machine learning algorithms are not deployed in notebooks. They're deployed in software developed toolkits like PyCharm and VS Code on systems like AWS, with things like linters, Docker containers and unit testing. And unfortunately, these things I just described aren't very easy to do on a notebook. I really wished I upskilled more in the software engineering kind of basics and principles before going to my first role. I highly recommend that if you're still learning data science, that you implement some of your solutions in more developer and software engineering focused IDEs like VS Code or PyCharm. And if you want to learn things like Docker, unit testing or linting, then I have a whole series of articles I've written on Medium, which I'll link in the description below that you can check out. If you're anything like me, then pretty much everything in data science excites you. You know, I really wanted to learn reinforcement learning, deep learning, optimization, forecasting. I mean, the list goes on. Basically, I wanted to learn everything. And I thought going to my first role that I was going to learn all these things and become an expert in pretty much everything, data science and machine learning. In reality, it's nearly impossible to learn all those things. And because there's so much active research going on, the size of the knowledge pie just gets bigger and bigger week after week. Instead, I realized it's best to focus on one domain or one specialty that best aligns with the area I was working in at the time. Focusing on one thing is how you make progress. And even then, after one year of continuous studying in one area, you still wouldn't be properly classed as an expert. It's not a bad thing to start your career by being an expert or basing your skills in one area. You can always pivot at a later time. When I got my first role, I was so excited about all the fancy machine learning algorithms I was going to build. In reality, building algorithms is only like 5% of the job. Being a data scientist is much more than simply just coding algorithms. It's really more about gathering data, digging into it, and trying to find what the data is really showing. I mean, it's literally in the title, data scientist. Most of my workflow was basically just manipulating data and just getting it rather than using it to train the model. Data is by far the most important part. You can answer many business questions and generate a lot of value by simply just looking at data and just describing what it's telling you. You don't need to build machine learning algorithms all the time. Deploying algorithms have their time and place and they do generate value. However, like I said, most of your time is spent simply just looking and analyzing data. And this is something I need to continue to remind myself to this day and something I wished I knew before going to my first job. Data science is a highly technical field. So it's easy to think that to become a great data scientist, all you need to be is very good at maths and coding. From my first year experience, the best data scientists weren't the ones who basically knew everything about everything. They were the ones who could basically describe their findings and articulate it in a very clear way. And this is how they have influence within the company. You see, the models you build mean pretty much nothing unless you can explain 
particularly to non-technical stakeholders, what they're actually doing behind the scenes. But senior stakeholders are not going to be too keen if what you're doing they don't really understand and you can't explain what you're doing. So the key here is that trying to make your work as interpretable as possible and digestible as possible because that's the way you're going to drive influence and really stand out and basically you know move up the ranks in the company. Now the way I do this on a daily basis is that I always try to have the business focus at the back of my mind and ask myself the question how is the work I'm doing influencing the business? And often the answer is simpler than you think and you don't need a PhD in quantum physics to figure it out. In the real world, there is no such thing as a nicely cleaned and predefined CSV file that you can simply read in and start building a model on. I had to learn this the hard way as I was used to these nicely formatted CSV files that I was getting from Kaggle. You normally get a business problem and it's your responsibility to frame it in a data science way. You have to understand the business requirements, the data, and find a solution to the problem. There's no notion whether the problem will be a classification or regression. These are things you have to work out for yourself from the business requirements given to you. Now, there are senior data scientists at hand to help you through this process, but I had to get used to working in this ambiguous way to deliver solutions to problems that weren't necessarily so clearly defined from the outset. It does get easier over time, particularly when you start developing a better business intuition of the domain that you're in. Coming from university to a real job, I really had to adjust at the speed and accuracy that I was delivering my work at. At university, it's okay to work for long periods of time and make mistakes, as because they don't really have any real world consequences. However, when your projects actually influence business decisions, it's essential that you take your time and also triple check your data and your findings. Trust me, I learned this the hard way. There was an assignment that I was given in my first year as a data scientist, and obviously I can't go into all the details behind the work and what I was trying to do. But the crux of the story was that I joined two tables incorrectly. My left join was formatted wrongly, and basically that led to the results I presented to be pretty much completely incorrect. Fair to say I was really embarrassed, and now I make sure that I always double check, triple check, even check four times my left joint, inner joints, anything I do that is merging two data sets together from that one experience. And I'm sure if I took more time and validated my data sets that this error would have been avoided. But like I said, I learned it the hard way. So the crux of the story to you is that make sure you check all your data, particularly when you're merging two data frames or tables together. No one is going to get annoyed at you if you deliver your work on time to a high standard. It's better than simply trying to get it in early and trying to show off, but get it all wrong. Adjusting to your first data science job will always be challenging because it's a very different dynamic to work in than full-time studying. However, I think you can make it easier if you take into account the things I list in this video and try to action upon them during your learning. If you want to hear more from me, then I run a weekly newsletter called Dishing the Data, which is all about becoming a better data scientist. I'll link it in the description below in case you want to check it out. If you enjoy this video and want to see more videos like this on this channel, then make sure you click the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.